let's close our eyes for prayer father in the name of jesus we thank you tonight because we know you are a good god you are a loving god we thank you for giving us the privilege of serving you i pray lord you bless all your people here tonight in jesus name thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray well actually tonight we don't have much you know what we're going to do we're going to have instructions and inspiration from the book of jonah we're looking at chapter one chapter one is running away from god chapter two reaching out to god number three reaching out for god number four that is chapter four reasoning with god i just summarize some lessons for you in chapter one in chapter one knowing the will of god like jonah knew is one thing doing that will is another thing number two from joppa jonah fled running away to prevent the conversion of the gentiles but from that same joppa in later years peter followed the spirit's leading to be used of god for the conversion of the gentiles in chapter one we learn another thing it pays to serve jesus but it pains to forsake his service then we learn jonah paid dearly for running away from god but god paid fully to bring him back to himself he didn't pay anything he just had a free ride in the fish and then came back eventually to god but then another thing disobedience is more costly than doing god's will jonah thought if i did god's will and i went to nineveh i may suffer he discovered that disobedience made him to even suffer more preaching preaching the gospel may demand some sacrifice but refusal to preach attracts much suffering for the wages of sin are not paid in one long sum they are paid throughout the journey of life jonah didn't just pay just once yes he paid once when he was going to tashish but that wasn't the only cause he paid dearly throughout the journey and many people if they remain in sin they may be paying for the rest of their lives and then throughout eternity in the belly of hell they'll keep on paying the price we learn another thing in chapter one accommodating and associating with a rebellious backslider may cost you the loss of peace the loss of property and the loss of progress then you know jonah's theology was better than his testimony he spoke about the god of israel that's theology his testimony was that he was running away from god his confession was greater than his consecration look at chapter two now chapter two is where he prayed reaching out to god we learn in chapter two that passion in prayer is more important than posture in prayer jonah prayed the most powerful the most effective effectual prayer when he was he was not conscious of his posture a single storm may get us to the place of prayer quicker than many sermons in fact from the experience of jonah we learn that earthly suffering may be the schoolmaster that brings us to the savior in order to escape eternal suffering another lesson we learn afflictions and adversity may soften the heart and make it ready to receive the divine seal and imprint while prosperity may even harden the heart uh, you find out uh, you know people get married and they've done uh, something wrong before the marriage but there's child there's prosperity there's everything and their hearts are hardened and they feel there is no problem and they will not dig out they will not dig up they will not confess they will not expose the sin they committed but when there is no child and there is adversity and there is suffering and everything is going down then they remember maybe it's because of what we did before the marriage and then they confess and forsake their sin god forgives and begins to bless them actually jonah learned the hard way that trying to avoid difficult missionary assignment may bring us to greater difficulties and misery and affliction 
I put it this way. In the dark room of the guard room, Jonah developed the true picture of a submissive preacher. And then we learn that the greatest vow a preacher can make to God is the vow to announce God's salvation to the sinners. He said, I'll pay my vows. And the greatest vow you can make to God is not just giving money, not just giving time, not just giving that. It's to announce the, the, the message of redemption to the sinners that are perishing. I come to chapter 3 now. Chapter 3 is reaching out for God. That's when he got that second chance. And then he preached the word of God. Jonah's miracle. An answer to prayer was to prepare him for his assignment of preaching. When any miracle happens to you, the reason that miracle happens to you is to prepare you to do the will of God and to prepare you to fulfill the assignment, accomplish the work the Lord has given you to do. Restoration to divine favor. You are backsliding. You went away from the Lord and the Lord now has restored you. Restoration to divine favor is God's preparation for our assignment to evangelize. Those who hear God's call more than once must double their consecration to obey the Lord. The Lord spoke to Jonah the second time. Arise, go to Nineveh. That preaching I gave you before, go and announce it, go and preach it. When you hear the call to service the second time, it's a call for you to double your consecration. And then God is tender. God is understanding. God is patient and God is loving. But God is also firm. He will not allow his prophet, his servant, his minister, or even his child, he will not allow anyone to change from the career of preaching the gospel if he wants you to preach if he has called you to preach if he needs to send a storm after you disorganize everything in your life until you come back to the assignment he wants you to fulfill you will do it before he leaves you alone very gentle very patient very loving very kind very much forgiven but very firm a man will not have peace until he comes back to the very center of the will of God. On this side of the grave, here's another lesson. There may be a second chance to be called to salvation or called to service. But please remember, on the other side of the grave, there is no second chance. Where the tree falleth, there it will lie. Jonah preached God's word. To the city without the help of a supporting team. That tells us then the lack of having evangelism partners, soul winning partners, is not an excuse for not evangelizing. Team or no team, supporters or no supporters, he has called you to preach the gospel and it has to be done. God's word preached faithfully by Jonah was a powerful instrument God used to convict and convert the Ninevites. Not Jonah's storytelling or personal experience in the depths of the sea. There are some people that like to tell us that they were in the secret cult. And in the secret cult, this is what they did. This is what they did. This is what happened to them. And then they, they think that as they do that, and they make all those announcements of what used to happen at the time they were in the secret court, they think that that is what to bring people to the Lord. And then some people will say they fainted or they died. After they died, this happened to them, that happened to them. They think that is what will bring people to the gospel. If anybody has any experience to tell, any story to tell of when he died, of when he was beyond the human recovery, Jonah had the story to tell. But he didn't tell the story. It's the word of God. Preach the word. Be instant in season. 
out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their manners they will gather to themselves teachers having itching ears and they will turn away from the truth and turn unto fables but you do the work of an evangelist and endure suffering endure affliction make full proof of your ministry that's what the lord is telling us jonah went to Nineveh what did he do he preached the word and anytime you have chance whether it's in our church here or any other place and not stories that you have read in books of such and such experience such and such experience preach the word that's the thing that actually God the Ninevites saved and then he was preaching on the judgment of God. And that preaching of judgment brought the greatest multitude to repentance and to salvation. Nineveh, another lesson was wicked beyond description. Yet, the faithful preaching of God's word brought them to repentance. Many hardened sinners will be converted if preachers are more faithful in the preaching of the word. I told you chapter 1 is running away from God. He paid dearly for that. I told you chapter 2 is reaching out to God. He, pay, he prayed unto the Lord. And he promised and consecrated he will fulfill the vow of the preacher, the prophet. And then chapter 3 is reaching out for God. Preaching the word that the Lord had given him. He had a second chance and he never joked or that second chance. Number 4 which is chapter 4 is reasoning with God. The people had been converted now and this is what jonah didn't want jonah didn't want the conversion of the gentiles and because he didn't want that that's why he ran away in the first place and now eventually he saw that the lord had had mercy and the people were converted all of them the greatest revival in the old testament the greatest revival in the history of the children of israel and now jonah became dissatisfied unhappy because 40 days Nineveh shall be overthrown. His prophecy had not been fulfilled because of the mercy of God. Listen to this in chapter 4. Jonah had the gift of prophecy. But he didn't have the grace of perception. Had the gift of prophecy but not the grace of perception. Another thing. Jonah's patriotism was stronger than his passion. For souls, he saw sinners through Jewish eyes rather than through the eyes of Jehovah. As God was looking at the Ninevites, that they should not perish. If Jonah had seen those people in the eyes of Jehovah or through the eyes of Jehovah, he would have moved with passion and vision, wanting them to come to the Lord. But rather, he saw those people through the eyes of the Jews. Another thing, self did not allow Jonah to see beyond his own point of view. You know what? If you have self and you are full of self, you will lose the inspiration, the illumination of the Holy Spirit. You'll be so full of self, you will never see beyond your point of view. You will see in your selfish understanding. You will see that your own way of looking at it is the only way to look at it. That's what happened to Jonah. And many people go through life. They will never see beyond their point of view. They will miss God's perspective. Jonah's view of success in ministry was very different from that of God. And God had to pass him through a painful process to bring him to his point of view. Another thing we learn from chapter 4 is that cities are centers of crime, centers of iniquity, centers of poverty and degradation, centers of ignorance and sophistication. Yet, beyond it all, God is concerned for the salvation of city dwellers. Another thing, God hates sin more than we do. But then, he loves sinners more than we do. You hate sin? Good. Then you need to love the sinners and reach out to them and tell them the eternal consequence of continuing in sin. Jonah overvalued the less important things of life and he undervalued the eternal happiness of never dying souls. He overvalued the plant that grew up, 
that gave him the shade. He overvalued things that were not significant, but he undervalued. The souls of men never die in souls. How many people today, they overvalue, they overage education. They overvalue material things, material property. But when it comes to sacrificing for souls that need salvation, they don't understand. And yet Jesus said, what shall he profit a man? If he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul, or what shall man give in exchange for his soul? And so we need to change, have a new understanding, whatever we can do to save souls. Here is the time to do it. Believers who are slow to evangelize, but they run after temporary comfort and material possession. They are like Jonah. God reasoned from the divine perspective, but Jonah reasoned from the human perspective. That's why they came, Jonah. And God came to different decision and different conclusion. And although he was a prophet, and although you are a Christian, if you are reasoning from the human angle, and God is reasoning from the divine angle, you are going to come to a different decision and to a different conclusion. It's when you come to the side of God and you reason together, come now and let us reason together says the lord as he is reasoning from the divine perspective come now let's reason that same way and you too you reason from the divine perspective is then you'll come to the same conclusion with god is then you'll come to the same decision too with god now preachers who look at men with racial prejudice they will miss god's will and they will lose god's best in ministry reach out to all men and women with eternity in view whatever you are doing for the lord do it with eternity in view put your best into it don't think about any other thing it's uh, you know it's like all these testimonies i gave you and uh, some of those uh, messages i preached there uh, w when i come to the pulpit especially in those places i come and see you don't know what will be the last message. And you don't know when the Lord will come. And you do not know the spiritual needs of the people that are there. And if there is anything you can do, do it now. And give it your very best. Because that's what Jesus Christ did. That's why it says the love of Christ compels us. For we judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. So that the people that live now will not live unto themselves. But they will live unto the one that died for them. Which is telling us as you look at what Jesus Christ has done. And you know what he gave for you. Then you think, what am I going to do? for the lord and you sing the song when i survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died all my gain i count but loss and i pour contempt on all my pride and then it says forbid it lord that i should boast except save in the cross of christ my king and then it says see from his head his hand and his feet sorrow and love flow mingled and did ever such love or sorrow meet or thongs compose so rich a crown that's why the songwriter said why the whole realm of nature mine that why a present far too small love look at calvary look at the cross look at the crown of thorns look at what he did look at the blood he shed for you look at him as was going to the cross and he fell beneath the weight of the cross when you look at that you say love so amazing love so divine demands my soul demands my love demands my all that's why when you come to offer anything to the lord not half-heartedly with all your heart with all your soul what christ has done for me demands that i give everything to the lord and if education is possible fine if education cannot be combined with my service to the lord let education go let every other thing go i am going to serve the lord that's what the lord is expecting from you now as we have gone through the book of jonah and you have seen how jonah eventually served the lord and you have seen he reasoned from a different perspective from god so he couldn't come to the same conclusion and the same decision with god i'm calling you tonight you have been reasoning many of you different from god not thinking in god's perspective but tonight i call upon you once again 
Maybe this is your second chance. Maybe this is your third chance. That the Lord is saying, I need more consecration from you. I want more surrender from you. I want more dedication from you. I want absolute surrender. Everything given to the Lord. Your money, your life, your time, everything that you call yours, it belongs to the Lord. And when you now give it to the Lord and you say, Lord, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to worship you. And I'm not going to grudge you with anything I have. That's what the Lord is expecting. I want you to rise up. Don't be like Jonah. A second chance is coming to you. Maybe a third chance is coming to you. Maybe be a four chances coming to you i will serve the lord i will serve the lord are you praying jesus use me jesus use me i want to do your will i want to do your work there must be a work that i can do do it be humble make my will to crumble and though the cross be great then it says yet i will work for you i will serve you talk to the lord talk to the lord tell him you want to serve him you surrender everything unto the lord don't be like a reluctant prophet like jonah we need missionaries we need overseers we need preachers we need evangelists we need soul winners we need people that will reach out to the gospel a second chance has come to you what is your response